time to talk about ingressive phonation. If you're into phonology, you've probably heard of ingressive phonation. And weirdly, if you're into super deep bass singing, you've probably also heard of ingressive phonation. My first exposure to ingressive phonation was when I realized I could talk while breathing in as a little kid, and I would use it to do weird little voices. This is my personal real life approximation of that Texas speech voice achieved using a falsetto register and ingressive phonation. <sighs> oh my god. My second exposure was when I found out it wasn't just a weird thing I could do while talking and was in fact a technique used by contemporary bass singers to hit really fucking low notes. <laughs> And so imagine my surprise when a few years later I'm introduced to, to ingressive phonation in a third way, which is in how it appears naturally in the languages of the world. I didn't know that it appeared naturally. I thought they were like pugs, you know? They only exist when you intentionally create them and you could never find them out in the wild. But I was completely wrong. Ingressive phonation is a legitimate feature of speech in a number of parts of the world, in a number of different languages, in a number of different contexts, for a number of different reasons. Localized entirely within your kitchen. If you're still not following, I'll explain what ingressive phonation is. It's essentially making noise while breathing in. It can be as simple as doing a little gasp, like <gasps> That's a sound made by breathing in, and so that's ingressive phonation. You phonate ingressively. There's two types of ingressive phonation. There's the voiced kind, which is where you actually vibrate your vocal cords while breathing in, like, ah. Uh, and there's the one where you don't vibrate them, and it's just sort of an inhaled whisper, which is, now the context in which ingressive phonation is used around the world is interesting. Usually it's a purely social thing. It's just a part of speech um, where people happen to talk ingressively and, you know, if someone inhales a, a word rather than exhaling it, it doesn't have a real difference on the meaning of the word, you know? In other words, it is not phonemic. For a feature to be phonemic, you need to use that feature to tell words apart. In English, for example, we can tell that whether a consonant is voiced voiced or not is a phonemic feature because we use it to tell the differences between words. Take pick versus big. The only difference between those two words is that in one, all the consonants are voiceless and in the other, they're voiced. And so we can deduce voicing as contrastive and phonemic in English. But there are no languages in the world where inhaling a word rather than exhaling it is a phonemic feature. There is no language in the world where ah uh, is functionally different from ah. Uh. There have been a few languages in which they're rumored to be phonemic and I'll go over those now. There is a central Taiwanese language which I believe is pronounced so or maybe tsu, or maybe tsao, and people have alleged that this language uses ingressive phonation as a contrastive feature, as a phonemic feature. And from what I can read, that claim has been disproven. There is another language, though, in which ingressive phonation is allegedly contrastive, or, or at, at the very least phonemic, and that is Darman. Darman is a ceremonial register of Lardil, spoken by the Gunanamanda of the Gulf of Carpentaria's Wellesley Islands, and by the Yangal of Forsyth Island and the nearby coast. It was invented as a way for initiated men to communicate with one another without the uninitiated being able to understand them. I'm pretty sure it's got mostly the same grammar as normal Lardil, but it's got completely different words and completely different phonology. And since it's designed to be completely unintelligible to the uninitiated, um, and, you know, designed to only be understood by initiated men, it's got some crazy sounds in it because people are deliberately trying to be difficult to understand and trying to be difficult to imitate to outsiders. Some of my personal favorite weird consonants are bra, pa, ka, fa, and uh, the one that people freak out about in this regard, sa. Now, Dharman isn't really spoken anymore. I think there are very few people left who can actually speak it because the ceremonies around it have mostly died out. But in descriptions of Dharman that were written by linguists while it was still spoken, we can see the description of a particular consonant, ah. And yes, you heard slash read right, that sound is made by breathing in. It's an ingressive phoneme. Now it's completely possible that this sound is phonemically ingressive, you know? You could make a sound while breathing in and it would be correct, but if you did it while breathing out like then it would be incorrect and people would notice that and correct you. If that's the case, that the sound is only considered correct while breathing in, then you could say that the ingressive part of that is phonemic, even if it doesn't really contrast with other sounds. But here's the thing. First of all, the author could have just misheard the sound or transcribed it or described it wrong. They could be mistaken. We could be mistaken. We could be just interpreting their description wrong. But even if it is real, even if there was a true phonemic ingressive sound, it's not 
really clear whether it should count as phonemic and whether we should really care in the first place. Because sure, the ingressive part might be essential to pronouncing the sound correctly, but it does not contrast with anything else. The ingressive part is just a component of the phoneme. It's not what's used to tell things apart. And so while you could say that Darman had an ingressive phoneme, it would probably be wrong to say it had phonemic ingression or phonemic ingressive phonation, if you want to talk properly. Now with that out of the way, let's quickly look at the languages in the world where it is a feature, we know that for certain, and we also know that it's not phonemic, but it's still there and it's still a feature of speech. There's this interesting phenomenon around the world where people will inhale the affirmative or negative words of their language. Um, it'd be like if I was speaking English and you were saying something and you were like, oh, did you go to the store today? And I say, yes, or I say, no. For some reason, it's those particular words, the affirmative and negative, and maybe a few other words, which are in, in a lot of places around the world, in completely unrelated languages and languages that have had no contact with each other, they are the most likely words to be inhaled on a regular basis. That doesn't mean that the inherent word itself is always inhaled. It just means that you can inhale that word and people do inhale that word in regular conversation. One area where this happens is around the North Atlantic and the North Sea in places like Ireland, Scotland, Cumbria, Newfoundland, the Maritimes of Canada, and even in Maine in the US. I've also heard of it happening in European French, Low and Northern German, Estonian, Danish, Norwegian, Swedish, in Hausa, which is a very widespread trade language in Africa. It's seen in languages throughout the Philippines, throughout Togo, throughout Mali, throughout Cameroon. It's a very, very widespread feature. In Khakha, Mongolian, or um, I'm pretty sure that's standard Mongolian. I'm pretty sure that's the standard dialect around the country. Not only can yes and no words be inhaled, but so can various short common phrases like I don't know. I've heard tale of people in Iceland and Ireland and the Faroe Islands of um, people speaking and saying whole phrases ingressively. There are unverified reports of Native American Thorn or Ortham women speaking entirely ingressively. That sounds like a load of bullshit to me, but it's still out there. Update. I have found the report, the, well, I mean, there's a few actual um, records of it happening, but I found one actual source that says that this happened. It does not say that Thorna Ortham women just inhale all of their speech whenever they talk. It does say that they use it for emphasis, that when they're trying to emphasize something and like, or they're asked to repeat something or something like that, they'll inhale the word um, or the phrase or the sentence or whatever to try and make that emphasis um, And I think that's really interesting, but they do not use it in all of their speech that that is bullshit I was right on that one as you can probably tell it's been a little while since I recorded the first part of this video <laughs> Now it's all well and good that around the world people inhale certain words and phrases or maybe even whole sentences But it raises a very important question of why and it's a very difficult question to answer It's an annoying fact of linguistics that the vast majority of sound changes throughout history, throughout the world, happen for absolutely no reason. And if there is a reason for a linguistic change, the vast majority of times it's completely inscrutable. This is one of those cases where, you know, there could be a reason for people inhaling yes and no words and certain common phrases. There could be a, a reason for it that we just haven't figured out yet. Or people could have just started doing it randomly with absolutely no motivation. People saying certain words or phrases aggressively, that could just be a random thing that started happening in certain places for no, for no reason whatsoever. Or it could be, you know, fucking aliens did it, who knows? My hypothesis, and I think this is probably quite likely, is that words that and, and phrases that get inhaled are ones that you use a lot in conversation and I think that's why yes and no are often you know are often very likely candidates for being inhaled rather than spoken normally and the reason for this is that yes and no words are often used in back channeling back channeling is when you are having a conversation with someone and you say little words or noises or phrases to let them know that you're paying attention um, examples include uh-huh yeah Wow. Mmm. Yeah, no, yeah. You're probably going to not mm -hmm. you, I'm just saying, like if you if somebody's gonna like push you into a meat grinder mm. and like your one of your fingers wow. is still intact, they're not gonna pick it up and all <laughs> yeah, it wasn't Stuff like that. A pattern I've noticed with back channeling around the world is that it tends to be pretty lazy. It's an absolute minimum effort thing just to avoid offending someone else or just to show to them that you're listening. If you look at English words that we use in back channeling, we've got shit like hmm or 
Huh. Just absolute minimum effort noises that hardly even count as words that we just chuck at the other person while they're talking to us. And it's common knowledge to everyone except my sister that when you're talking, you have to take breaks to breathe. While someone's talking to you, you're gonna be breathing in and breathing out. And it's perfectly reasonable if someone's talking to you and you wanna, you know, make a noise to respond, but you don't wanna interrupt the good inhale you've already got going. So you just say the word while inhaling. That's how I think a lot of the more, you know, yes, no, the more limited scope in Relations. I think that's how a lot of them emerge in the first place in speech is while you're back channeling You'll just inhale a few words a few simple common words in order to get across that Yeah, you are listening But to also not waste too much effort doing that and this patterns with the fact that in a lot of languages Especially the ones that I mentioned around the North Sea and the Atlantic Ocean if you listen out for it Most of this ingressive speaking happens as back channeling I'm not saying that all ingressive speech emerged from back channeling, but I'm saying that in the languages where it's, you know, not too common and it's limited to certain words and phrases, those words and phrases tend to be short and common. They're things where you can say them while breathing in and sort of mess up how they sound to the listener, but since they're short and common, they can still be easily understood. It's just a way of talking more efficiently, and that that is a common thread in sound change. Across all of history, the one thing that unites a, the vast majority of sound changes and linguistic phenomena and stuff like that is that they make speaking slightly easier. That's why I think ingressive phonation happens. Why did I have to have a goddamn fucking voice crack on the hardest line of the video? Fuck you, voice. Anyway, that's been me rambling about um, noises and ingressive phonation. Before I go, I'm gonna play a few samples of English speakers inhaling certain words, just to give you a taste of, ingress of ingressive speech as it appears in the wild. Oh. It wasn't very old when I started milking the cow. <laughs> Is that right? Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the first things that they got. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I started milking when I was seven or eight, I guess. And I was really? 17 when I... <laughs> 10 years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We inhale the word yes! back here. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to that guy? Tried to say, yeah, passed out. Uh, I'm going to be disappointed. Very disappointed. I heard metal $147 down the beano the other night. Eh? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Before I end the video, I'd like to make a very important announcement. There are two people who I have to give shout outs to because I promised them I would. Um, <laughs> first of all, there is everyone's favorite blue quick Erinaceid, Velocihog. And second of all, there is Kira, my actual real life friend who is a saint. The reason that I'm giving these two people shout outs is because they are the very first two members of my channel. That means they give me a teensy little bit of money every month to help me afford food and help keep me um, alive and help keep me motivated to make YouTube videos on this channel. I added memberships as a feature to my channel because um, last video got delayed by about a week because me and my partner couldn't afford Wi-Fi. And so <laughs> it's purely a thing of just, if you want to show your support for me and for the channel, you can donate a little bit of money every month. I've kept the prices very low and you can get a shout out at the end of the video like this one. You can get uh, input into which videos get made, get made next. Um, you get these weird little emoji things that YouTube suggested I make. I made them and they're really fucking useless. I can't imagine any context in which they'd be used, but they're, they're there. You can, you can get them for the low, low price of one and a half Australian dollars. But if you want to support my channel and you absolutely, I don't expect anyone to, um, it's purely a thing of your own goodwill. You get a few little bonuses as a result, but it's mainly just to support me. And I, I sincerely thank Velocihog and Kira for being my first two members and the first two um, financial supporters of the Academy. I'll see you all next week. Have a good night.